You asked for it, you got it. Tarantula room tour slash feeding video. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Before I get going, I want to bring your attention to this awesome shirt that I'm wearing. Yes, Carlo has done it again. He sent me a shirt from his shop, Everything Exotic. If you haven't checked out everythingexotic.com, you should. He's got some awesome designs that he's come up with and he's got lots of stickers, t-shirts, he's got home decor and even car accessories that you can purchase and it's all tarantula related and it's really cool. So definitely go check him out. I'll post a link down below so you can go see his website and purchase something for yourself. So you've probably figured out from the title that I'm doing a tarantula room tour of my collection and um, I've gotten a lot of requests for me to do this and I've kept putting it off, kept putting it off. Frankly, I was a little bit embarrassed to do that because I used to have most of my collection in the living room and um, where my computer was, I had my bookshelf, which is right over here, that was sitting next to me and that was the majority of my collection since I had mostly slings. Some of the rest of my collection was either on a different shelf, in the, also in the living room, or it was at school. But since everything is crazy right now and everybody's home, my entire collection is here. And now that I have my tarantula room, it's made it a lot easier for me to do this. So um, yeah, but I'm only gonna do half of my collection today. This is gonna be in two parts. So I'm gonna go through everything that is in this bookcase right here and everything that is behind me right here. All of this stuff on this side that you probably can't see, I'll, t I'll do for the next one. But I've got probably 117 specimens and it's gonna take a while to go through those, especially since I'm doing a feeding video as well, which you guys love, and uh, I don't do those enough. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly so that we can get through everything as quickly as possible. So hope you enjoy it. And I'm gonna kick this off on a sad note. Um, while I was going through all my specimens and feeding everything, um, I got to my praying mantises over here and I discovered that my female ghost mantis had passed away. And I've got her soaked in alcohol right now. Um, I'm planning on preserving her. Uh, I was, I'm really bummed out about it because I was planning on breeding her. I have a male specimen over here and uh, I was hoping that he would mature out in time so that I could breed them. And I was planning on putting her into a larger enclosure, but then she just died. Um, I have no idea what I did wrong. Uh, I, it might've gotten too stuffy. She might've not had enough room. So, you know, that's one of those things I'm not really all that great with mantises. This is my first real experience, especially with ghost mantids. So I feel like I kind of blew it here on uh, at the end because she probably should have lived a little while longer. But you know, I'm broken hearted, but that's, that's how it goes. Hopefully I'll be getting some more in the near future, but right now, yeah, I, I, it is what it is and I'm not gonna mess around with them anymore for a little bit. This is Seriopagopus lividum, commonly known as the cobalt blue, but this one's special because it is a green femur, which is a different color morph. It's a different regional color morph. And uh, the other reason that this is special to me is that it was gifted to me by Nate of Micro Wilderness. This is my first cobalt blue. I've never had one. And I've had people ask me if I would do a video on the cobalt blue, but you can't do one if you don't have one. So now I do. And uh, if you would like to purchase your own, you can go to microwilderness.com and use that promo code that's shown there to get 10% off your shopping cart. If you remember my Ambly Pig Eye video part two, this is one of the uh, Phrynis that I was trying to identify, so I don't have a species name on it. I'm still trying to identify it, although I got a few people that are that are helping me out and trying to figure out what they are. Well, if you remember, one of them was Gravid and uh, she had her babies. So these are her babies and I caught her at the point where the babies were molting and starting to leave her back. So there's a little bit of a time lapse here where you can actually see one of the babies molting out. 
it always amazes me when these things molt because their legs are so tiny and so thin. Uh, I just wonder how they get out of that without breaking or losing anything. It's just a really neat experience. And I think I ended up with 11 babies total. So not tons and tons of babies, but 11's pretty good. And you can see those little leg hairs just to go in on these babies. Um, they're, the wind is not blowing them. They actually flicker those things to sense their surroundings. And this is my unknown Frenish species, um, the second one that I have. And this is also a female. And also, if you recall, there was a picture on there where I showed her underside and you could see some eggs in there. I was told that if eggs are developing, then she has bred. So she is gravid and she'll probably have more babies in the near future. Pretty cool how quick they are. And here is Damon Diadema, my Tanzanian tailless whip scorpion, and she's put on quite a bit of size. I am looking for more of these. I would definitely like to breed her. So I'm constantly on the lookout to see if anybody has them, but they're kind of hard to find, at least at the moment. And here is my very shy Salmopius erminia. This is a very tiny specimen, so I wasn't about to try to feed her because all she would do was hide. And this is the other one that's a little bit larger, but again, they're very shy, so I probably wouldn't be able to get it to feed on video. And these are my Kokiana brunipes, and they are in pre-molt right now, so they're not eating. So I figured I'd just show them to you in the vials. They're so tiny. This is my Delicothele diamantinensis, the first one. And it's ready to jump out, but it, I believe it recently molted, so it was not very interested in food. The Lycothelia diamantinensis number two. And this one you can see just molted. And um, I was pretty sure it was not gonna be interested in food, but I wasn't really sure how long it had been since it molted. So I was gonna try just to see if I could get it to eat. And you can see by the fangs, they're not entirely black. So yeah, it's not gonna eat. Aphonapelma hensi, and it is in pre molt, so it's not interested in food. Uh, now, now, eventually, you do plan to have dinosaurs on your on your dinosaur tour, right? Hello? Oh, hello? Yes? I really hate that math. Little Tocat Vegans, and this one just molted, so obviously not interested in food. Stola Polkerpes number one, definitely in need of a rehouse. I'll most likely do a video real soon on this.
grab the stolen poker piece number two and i believe this one is in primo so also not interested in food Rocky Palma Aradam number one. Rocky Palma Aradam number two. Quick takedown there. Rocky Palma Aradam number three. Oh, that spoof there. Oh, and I like to call that one the death curl. Homeoma chilensis number one. And I didn't really expect it to eat because they have a tendency to fast. But it was hungry. Homeoma chilensis number two. And I was surprised that it did take that prey. Homeoma chilensis number three. And this one I know for a fact is in pre mold, so I don't expect it to eat. Rocky Pelma Smithy and this one molted about a week ago and you can see there it is ready to eat. Forminga Kylis species Rufus. Tyrannochylus murinus. PC Letheria ornata. And as you can see there, this one has recently molted, so I didn't really expect it to eat. I was hoping to maybe coax it out and so we can see it. Here it is inside of the container later on. Pisilotheria ornata number two. And this one, I uh, try to get it to come out, but they usually hide underneath the cork bark there. So sometimes I can get them to, to come out and take the roach. But I didn't realize that she was in pre-molt, so there she is in her container right after her molt. Theria Cosmos Leetzee, number one. And uh, these guys are really shy anyway, but as you can see down there toward the right bottom of the screen, um, this one just recently molted, so there was no way I was getting it to come out. And this is Theria Cosmos Leetzee, number two. And um, I caught myself last time on my dwarf video, I misspelled Columbia with a U, so I spelled it correctly this time. Apolopus species Columbia large, number one. And these guys are ready to take down prey that's much larger than themselves. Um, this one sat here for a little while with it before it ate, so I lost patience. 
Apolopa species Columbia large number two. Pelinobius muticus, commonly known as the king baboon. And these guys are pretty fossorial, so this is pretty much all we get is that little foot right there in the burrow. Gramostola pulchra. This one just molted. Pisilotheria formosa. And I can usually get this one to take the prey off the tongs, but your abdomen is looking pretty fat, so she was not hungry. We see Lotharia Miranda, and as you can tell there, she's just recently molted, so she's not going to eat for us. Spring must be the other molting season in tarantulas. Tapinacanius violaceus number one. These guys are pretty spicy. They're always willing to take down prey. Tapinacanius violaceus number two. Not hungry, must be in pre mold. Pisilotheria metallica number one. And I'll warn you right now, all of my metallicas are really fat right now, so they are most likely getting ready to mold soon. And that's the most we're going to see of that one. You see Lotharia metallica number two and uh, this one even though you see the male sign that I've written on the jar there um, I actually confirmed it female on my video when I used the microscope so I thought that was pretty cool because up until then I thought it was male Silotheria metallica number three and look at that big fat booty on that one I was really surprised to see that it had taken the roach 
and that's a little boy right there. And Pusillotheria metallica number four, and this one was being very shy, and I believe this one's also a male. Pisilotheria rufalata number one. They've become very reclusive as they've gotten bigger. Look at all those web curtains that it's thrown up. Trying to see if I can maybe poke it out a little bit so we can get a look at it. No such luck. Pisilotheria rufalata number two. And this one hasn't made as much web curtains as the other one has. She still was not willing to eat, been very shy. Look at those colors. I believe this one is a female. Pisilotheria rufalata number three. And these rufalata, I bought them as a communal from Fear Not Tarantulas when they were selling uh, several pokies as communals. And um, I kept them together for about a year. Um, originally there was five, but one passed away, but it, it just died of natural causes. It didn't die of being cannibalized. But yeah, I separated them because I'd heard that they only do well for about a year to a year and a half. And uh, I didn't want to end up with them eating each other. And put this one out here so you can see it. And this one is definitely a confirmed female. And Pisilotheria rufalata number four. This one I confirmed female also on the microscope video. And it had just molted, so I can only show you from the jar there. Theriopagopus hottie hottie, and this is a male, and unfortunately we only saw his feet there. This is my female cereal pagosa species, Hadi Hadi, and they're very shy, very reclusive. They're supposed to be arboreal, but they spend most of their time underground um, inside of their cork tube. So you can see that one there a little bit. I know the light doesn't help, but it, you can kind, of, kind of see the purplish tint on the legs. This is commonly known as the purple earth tiger. And sometimes I could get her to come up to the top of the cork tube and grab prey, but she just was not wanting to do that. And I ended up losing my grip on the roach, so I went down the tube. You can see from all the shaking that she's taking that roach down.
and that is probably the best look we're going to get of her because she will not come out. And this is my Pisilotheria Sophisca Highland and she is currently gravid so I didn't want to disturb her very much so that's the best look we're going to get. And strangely enough that night when I was working on this video she had produced an egg sac so I'm very happy and very proud of that. And these are Centuroides gracilis, commonly known as the Florida bark scorpion. That one on the piece of bark there is a male, and the one down below is the female. Females are a little bit shorter and stockier, the males are very long bodied. If you watch the Tarantula Collective, you'll see that um, Richard just had some that he got, and one of them was gravid, and she produced a bunch of babies for him. Congratulations, Richard. And for whatever reason, I can't seem to get my scorpions to eat for me on cue. They always do it in their own time. And this is my very spicy hot and tata hot and tata. And they are a pretty venomous scorpion. Uh, one of the cool things about them is that they are parthenogenetic, which means that they don't need a male to produce young. So if she is gravid, which I believe she is, they will produce offspring and uh, those offspring will all be female and produce offspring of their own. And this is my Chromatopelma cyanium pubescens. And I apologize in advance for this. I did not expect her to do that takedown like that. Um, I, otherwise I would have set up a lot better. Um, she is very fat and I thought she was in pre-mold, but <laughs> she came right up there and just took that roach like it was nothing. So um, yeah, I would have set up a whole lot better if I'd have known she was gonna do that. And this is my male ghost mantis, Phylocrania paradoxa. And this makes me so sad because I was hoping to breed him to my female that just passed away. So unless I can find another female or give him to somebody who has a female, he's gonna die a bachelor. And he's done pretending to be a leaf. Creobroder gematis, also known as the jeweled flower mantis. These guys are a lot more bold and less shy than the ghost mantis. This one's been real fun to, um, to raise up and she's a mature female. I'm hoping and trying to get a male for it, but um, right now I haven't had any luck.
these are new to my collection. I don't have to tell you that this is a Black Widow Lactrodectus Mactin number one, which means I have two of them. Now I actually caught these wild and I'll tell you the story in just a second. I was trying to feed it, but apparently it had not made enough of a web, so it didn't really have any sticky web and the roach didn't hang on for very long. This is the second one that I have, and this one is a younger one. You can tell by the abdomen, it has more striping on it and not that solid black. So um, eventually it will turn that solid black. But the story is I went to the school to go get something and because nobody's there, this one in particular had made a web inside of the door handle to the library where, where my wife works. So when I put my hand on the door handle to open it, I actually touched the web and she was guarding an egg sack. So I guess I'm lucky I didn't get bitten. But yeah, I figured I'd take her home and I found another one nearby and took that one too. Now this has always fascinated me about black widows and other true spiders is how they will tend to wrap up their prey before even delivering a bite at all. They just web them all up. And it's not until they feel secure that they come in and go in for that bite and kill their prey or at least disable it. This is my Monocentropus balfouri communal. I have six of them in here. And I really wasn't, didn't know what to expect. I just started throwing some roaches in to see if I could get one or two to come out. Um, and if you saw my video, I recently redid their enclosure and, and changed the sticks and things in there to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So they've been out a little bit more frequently. The temperature's been warmer. So that was one of the things that I was concerned about was that I wasn't seeing them and I was really scared that I didn't have all six anymore. But if you saw that video, you know that I do have all six. Now here's pretty cool because they started to come out, or at least this one did.
Uh, one of the things I love about Monocentropus balfouri is their social interactions. This I call begging for food. Sometimes you'll see some of the smaller specimens will follow the larger ones around if they have a prey item that they're carrying around with them and kind of beg them for food. But I found that as they get older, they tend to be a little bit more selfish with their food and will kick those little ones away and they'll be forced to go out and find their own prey. And this is a site that makes me very happy and this is occurring a lot more frequently. So I guess it's just the temperature um, before I didn't see any of them out or maybe one or two. I know there's only five of them out right here. The sixth one did come out later on. And last but not least, it's Natasha, my Brachypelma baby. And um, I paired her almost a year ago back in June with uh, her, the male that I had, Boris. And unfortunately, Boris passed away not too long after that. And I don't think the pairing took because it's been almost a year and she has not even kind of gotten fat or anything and hasn't even shown the first bit of um, any kind of nesting behavior or anything like that, like she's trying to prepare a sack. So I, I really don't think that it took. Um, they have been known to carry sperm around for a while and produce a sack later on so I guess there's still that chance but I really don't think that I'm going to have any offspring from her, at least not now. All right, how about those M. Balfouri? Wasn't that cool? It, you know, it just made me so happy to see them acting that way because that's what I normally used to see. And I guess it's a seasonal thing when the temperatures drop, you won't see them very much. But I had gone so long without seeing them, I was starting to worry, which is why I redid their enclosure. And I'm so glad that I did. Things are warming up, they're back out. Almost every night I can walk in here and see at least one or two of them out prowling around. Um, feeding time, it becomes a frenzy. They all come out and they get the, the roaches that I throw in there. And they're just up to all these little antics and stuff. Even had one hanging upside down, which was a pretty funny thing to see. So yeah, that, that's, that's the whole reason why I got into the Balfouri and I was getting a little bit disillusioned by them when I didn't see them at all. So that was a really cool thing to experience. Stay posted for part two of my tarantula room tour. Hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so that you won't forget. And uh, I'll go over everything that I have on this wall over here. I've got a large shelving rack over here, a shelving unit, and I've got a bookcase over here full of tarantulas. A lot of interesting specimens on that side. So um, next week promises to be a whole lot better footage wise because I've got a birthday coming up and no, I did not order tarantulas, but I did order something that is gonna improve my channel significantly. You probably figured out what that is. So um, yeah, next week, uh, uh, hopefully it'll get here on time and I'll be able to use it for um, shooting my next video. And I don't know if you noticed this at the beginning, but I have tweaked my logo. Um, those of you that wanted the new logo, you've got a new change a little bit of stuff on there that i feel like it improves my logo just a little bit and those of you that wanted to stick with the old you still have the old it still looks the same i just improved it a little bit as far as i'm concerned um and that brings me to my teespring store i have opened a teespring store i will put a link down below so you can go check that out where i have tarantula haven merchandise um and i've got some new designs on there and some new designs that i'm working on that i'll post on there for you to choose from them. Lots and lots of goodies there, so make sure you check that out if you want to purchase Tarantula Haven merchandise. And while I'm at it, go visit Carlos store, everythingexotic.com, where you can also purchase tarantula related merchandise. And if you are in the market for tarantulas, don't forget to visit Micro Wilderness and check out what he has there. Um, and if you 
use this promo code right here, you can get 10% off your entire shopping cart. That's a good deal. So make sure you check out microwilderness.com. And that's it for me today. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. Go check out the new Teespring store. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.